Yo, 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 yo. Yo, it's John Redcorn. It's uh, Alexander Wayne. I don't know who that is. I've just heard that before. You're like, you're like Quagmire mixed with Boomhauer. Quagmire mixed with Boomhauer. Okay. Because you're mad confusing sexually and a perv, but nothing you say makes sense. Well, it makes sense. It's just hard to understand. You're like a mumble rapper. When, when, when I'm trying to get like my quagmire on. I'm a, I'm a mumble. I'm a mumble quagmire. Like I'm, when I'm trying to tell them to get their pennies off, I'm like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a papoose. Hey, girl. It's like the roots, like don't say nothing, Huck. You want to get a zoom, zoom, zoom in the poom, poom? You know, it's just like a juvenile record. You know what that man is? You know what you boy is? You know what man? Boom, Howard. Yo, was Juvenile Nathan the Frank- first mumble rapper? Did we discuss this before? I think we have. Have we? And I think... I, I forget what we said, it, but he could be up there. I tried to show him. He's, he's top five mumble rappers, though. Yeah? Juvenile, for sure. Top five mumble rappers? Hmm. I mean, Back That Ass Up is a super classic. True. And the only words that I know is Back That Ass Up. Girl, you working with some man, man. <laughs> when you ride with the dragon, with Danny, you can smoke a fire bag, you're great, yeah. got money like a man. I'm a big time, yeah, pull the trigger, yeah, a game bang filly, yeah, man, yeah. I'm okay. on the hood now. Do we mumble our way into the um, announcing the episode? Episode 46. What do you think, man? Nah. Forty-six, huh? Forty-six, huh? Forty-six, huh? In the world, huh? give me high wing signs. Yo. So, um, we gotta get into serious matters. I came to bring the veins. Yo, Simpsons getting rid of a poo? Yeah, fuck a poo anyway. No. Yeah. No, when, when, when you fuck a poo, that, that's gonna be another topic that we get into later on. Let's pause. That's, uh, that's another topic later on. When you fuck a poo? No, hold on. You, you, uh, you, you understand. Right. You understand later. It's it's not a pause, but it's disgusting. Yo. Actually, like, hold on. Now that we brought it up, I'll, I'll tell you what what the uh, Alabama Hot Pocket is, and then we'll get back into the, the uh, poo stuff. So the Alabama Hot Pocket is when you shit in the girl's pussy and you, and you fuck her. Hmm. What do you think about that? Does that, like, interest you? It's like one girl, one vagina. Yeah, like you shit right on top of the. Like, There's no two girls to share it. There's no cup. You shit right like from the ass to the vagina, and then you fuck it. Does that work though? Like you would have to have some really hard shit. Like you'd have to be eating bananas the day before or something. A lot of potassium, like one of those really no, solid I, shits, it, and then it, not it, shit for like two days. So it's like one of those like dri- those fucking. No, it, 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 it's, it's just on the vagina. So even if it, even if it's like the shit, the shit is a sand, sandstorm. It's still like landing on the vagina and then you fuck through it. Oh, uh, so you don't have to actually shit inside of the vagina. You shit on top of the vagina. And then you put your dick through the shit into the vagina. So it's like fucking someone in their ass and their pussy at the same time. Sactamundo. Hmm. But only for you, not for them. Right. For them, and it's like just the, uh, filthy vagina. The possibilities of like something going wrong, like infections are like huge on that. But do people actually do this? It's a thing. Like, did you look into it though, or is it like the Cleveland steamer? Like, Cleveland steamer is real. I don't believe like any of these are real. I don't think people <laughs> actually do any of this shit. I think just like a bunch of high teenagers made the names up of all these fucked up things, put them on some like website, and then like they just like circulated back in like the nineties. Who the fuck does that shit? <laughs> yeah, girl, I'm gonna. Let this wet diarrhea all over your vagina. Oh, you want that shit, girl? Oh, yeah, give me that shit. Oh, fuck. Yeah, Put that diarrhea in my pussy. Since we're on these weird ones, okay. 
now um, we're doing the Cincinnati switcheroo. Cincinnati switcheroo. Is that when like she looks out a window and you have your homie come out of the closet and then you walk by on the street and you're like, hey. This is something that like none of us will ever encounter because we don't use condoms. But this is... um. Like Yo. A- you got to be using a condom if you're doing an Alabama Hot Pocket. You're crazy <laughs> if you're not using a condom for that, though. Like, pause. Yeah, you got, yeah. You that's got. The, that's the one, that's the one time when, like, you'd be like, yo. That's yeah. one time where, like, okay. wearing a condom is permitted. Yo, would you fuck a girl who had AIDS if you had a condom? What if it was, like, a dime? Like, what if, like, Megan Fox wanted to fuck you? And then you had to sign this disclaimer first, and it was like, she has AIDS. You're like, all right, I'll go with a condom. Um, am I doing that right, right now? Or am I doing it like, later on in my life? Um, why? What age does that become appropriate? Um, I just want like, at least another two years of living. Like two years from now. Word, so in two years, you're like, all right, whatever. Yeah, I've already I can done go out with a bang. Yeah, I've already done a lot. In my Megan life. Fox. All yeah, right. I just need a couple more things on my bucket list. That's yeah, all. just give me that. Okay, that's fair. So, yeah, another couple years. and That's fair. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so the Cincinnati switcheroo. This is interesting. Okay. Before doing a chick, you fish out one of your roommate's condoms at the trash. Turn it inside out and put it on, and then when you fuck the chick, it gets his cum in the girl. So it, really, you're fucking her, but somebody else is getting her pregnant because it's different cum on the outside. All right, but who the fuck reuses a condom? That's that's what this thing is. It's the um, Cincinnati switcheroo. See, it's some, like, 13-year-old kid back in, like, 98 <laughs> was sitting there on MSN Messenger when it first fucking dropped her. ICQ was gigging out with his friends doing prank phone calls and fucking watching fake video, fake, watch, downloading fake pictures on LimeWire of J-Lo's with boobs. And it's, like, a picture of Karen Electra with J-Lo's head cut and pasted <laughs> on it. And they're freaking schwanking each other off because they're weird like that and they're 90s kids and fucking... Got the great idea to like post a website full of dumb shit like this. Yeah, that that one don't exist. Have you heard of there was another one? There's like the Houdini. There's a whole bunch. The Houdini, I think, was the first one I ever heard when I was a kid. The Houdini, I think is that the one like um, you're fucking her like out the window upstairs. Yeah. Then you like say, hold on a sec, and then your homie creeps out of the closet. And it's from behind, so she's looking out the window. Keeps and then going you go to and the then, window. Yeah. No, then you walk out the front door and just kind of like wave as you walk by. Hey, Agnes. What? 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 <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah, so... Um, Sickle mode. Yeah, so that's some fucked up shit. Yeah, I don't know. Like, okay. that joke is, like... <laughs> first of all, it's so not funny. Like, that's, like, way beyond a prank. You know what I mean? Like, that's not just, like, a prank you do. Like, oh, hey, Jim, I uh, actually uh, I took some of your sperm from the sperm bank to inseminate it into my wife because we can't produce. But funny thing is, she can produce, and I actually went and impregnated a random girl at the bar with your child. So now you're going to... It's like, what the fuck? Like, this is an April Fool's. It's like, yo, it's not a fool. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck you think this is? I'm gonna have to murder you now. You the like, fool. I'm catching well, a body, fam. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> like shit I, just got fucked up now. I pity a fool. Yeah, so but um, yeah, like the switcheroo, like yeah, yeah. That's already like past a prank. But then on the other level, it's like you you gotta be like the dude from fucking what's that show? New girl who's like really bad at pranks, but like. <laughs> And like, but in, but will execute horrible ones, and that's like the one you would execute to a T. Like, because who like, the fuck is putting their homie's condom on their I dick? I would say that, that's that's a pause right there. That person has to be paused because they're grabbing their fucking their homie's condom, and that fucking, and then they're hey. they're, they're, they're touching it and they're switching <laughs> it around and putting it on. That's a, that's an absolutely major pause. That's like that's like Cartman sticking Butter's dick in his mouth and tell, <laughs> going to school with the picture like, and hey, look, he's gay. Everyone's like, no, that makes you gay. He's like, no! <laughs> but it's fucking gay! He put his dick in my mouth! <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Like, man. Yeah, so, um, 
Do you think they're going to have to get rid of every Simpsons character, though, if they get rid of a poo? Because they're saying the, the, um, racial stereotype. There's other ones, too. Homer's a racial stereotype. Right. They yeah. all are. Yeah. There's so many of them. Um, Willie. Yeah. Again. The Chinese restaurant guy. All right. There's oh, one. wait. That's South Park. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many though. It's like it's like. There's an Asian guy on The Simpsons, isn't there? Or is there not? I can't think of one. I don't Neither know. can I. There has to be one, like in very like rare episodes, probably. Yeah, like there, I think there has to be one. There's been so many episodes, like. Yeah, I'd be surprised if there wasn't. Yeah. So uh, I think they should keep a poo. Why not? The show already sucks now, anyways. Yeah. It had its time. It was fire. Okay, yeah. But South Park, all day. Let's talk about this ultimate petty move. The ultimate petty person. And while we, we, we've we've determined this over other podcasts, 50 Cent has to be the petty 50 king. Cent, yo. Let's give a round of applause for 50 Cent, the pettiest man possibly on earth. The Petty Awards? Now, the funny shit is, so, like, what, the se- there was a sequence to it, which I can't remember exactly now, because I was in L.A. at the time. Okay, so, like, what? what but I, d- I watched him, like, make the post, like, joking about it. Yeah. Like, days before. It was, like, he first, like, made a post or something, and then, like, it wasn't until in the comments he actually said, he's, like, oh, because he posted the group on. The website, it was like $15 for the tickets. He's like, damn, times is hard. It's like, made some smart ass post. And then later on in the comments, was like, yo, I'm gonna buy the first 200, like the first two rows of this shit so it looks like no one's there. And then, sure as shit, like a week later, the show happened and the fucking sh- seats were empty. Like, he wasn't kidding. Yeah. And then he went on to brag about it after online. I, I think it all started like uh, he, he trolled uh, Ashanti. About having um, low ticket sales or something. Yeah, that is how it started, isn't it? Yeah. And, and then, like, her and Ja Rule are having a show. So, like, if he's like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to buy the first two rows of tickets. And honestly, yo, like... Um, That's crazy. Because, you know, like, he was saying that shit before the show even happened. Like, he was talking about it. If I were Ja Rule, you know what I would have done? Went and bought those seats? No, like, uh, uh, like well, like, they're already bought because, like... Here he had those those two rows, right? I would have told people to like um, f- fill in the seats. If they're the first two rows, I've been like, yo, like I would have, like been like let people move forward. But like, did he know that was the case though? Fifty Cent was putting it online beforehand. Yo, talk a little closer to the mic. Fifty Cent was putting it online beforehand, so he, here here he knew. Hmm. <laughs> I would have been like, yo, uh, everybody move up two rows. I feel bad for Ja at this point, man. Like, leave him alone. I don't know. I think, like. 50 is so funny, though. Like, he is King Petty. I love 57 for that. For sure. It's hilarious. Like, just, like, to have, like. But after, like, so much time, it's like, wow. Is 50 Cent the hip hop bully? For sure. Is he the boat? Is he the boat? The boat? The bully of all time? (laughs) <laughs> I didn't even catch what you were saying there until that. Is he the boat? Like, if 50 Cent went to high school with Rudy, would he have beat his ass? 50 Cent is the boat. He is the boat. Yeah. Hmm. I can't think of anybody else higher than uh, on, on the boat list. I couldn't tell if that shit was still recording or not. I'm high. Holy shit. More than any, and I'm a How about booze? How about booze? How about a booze? How about a booze? So, um, there's a segment where I try each different one. None. He's not trying shit. I'm gonna try each different one. I'm gonna try to not fart for this whole part. Cut part. part I'm gonna see which pop. one's better. Give me the loot. Like a light. Like a light. Like a light. Like a light. Like a light, like a like a light, light, like a light, 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 like a 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 light, 
Damn, that's strong. Ooh, I'm actually going to chase that because I have a vagina. You do. Smells like silk. But I'm going to say. Pause. The, um, I don't even know how to say that. Let me see that. What? Cask mates? Cask mates. That's the one. Eddie G um, is dyslexic. Oh, sure. I, for sure. I, I, I can't spell worse shit. I can't read worse shit. Look at these notes. Only I can read them. Can you shit worse shit? Can I shit where I, where I shit? Can you shit worth shit? Can I shit worth shit? Can you shit worth just worth shy? Worth shit? <laughs> no, I can't do that. I can't say that sauce. That's like one thing I can't say. I want someone to try to rhyme Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Is it Worcestershire though? I feel like like I feel like that's not right. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. You guys see like do Chappelle to get it out. I want the Worcestershire inside my Caesar, you little whore supplier. I'm a gorgeous buyer. I can afford your tires at an affordable buyer's asking price. Are these new tires or the used tires? Your ass I'll wipe for half a Sprite and a Lassie. Yeah, that's a fucking major pause. You wipe the ass <laughs> for half a sprite. <laughs> and Lassie. You know what Lassie could do for you? But still. That's pause, fam. That's a major. That's pause for you. How because that? it's it's gay for you to not want to have Lassie as a pet. That's not a pause. That's, that's a pause. No, I... Uh, I stand against this pause, and I, I do not accept this pause. So do you want to find a clause in the pause? <laughs> the clause in the pause. Yes. Yo, that, yo, that should be like a, a, a segment when, whenever one of us calls a pause on one another. It's not really a pause. It's a clause in the pause. We have to, we have to call the clause in the pause. Yeah, you have to argue it. You have yeah. to argue the clause in the pause. Exactly. Prove it. Prove it's a pause. Prove it's not or, or not a pause. Because if it's not a pause, then now you have to suck my dick. Pause. Yo, I don't have to argue that. That's like the most pause-worthy thing you ever said. <laughs> Yo, man. Play. That's a pause, bro. Like, Rewind. <laughs> Yo. Okay. We're going to leave that subject. Hmm. Like a light. Like a light. Like a light, where's my flight? I don't know if I look white. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I might. Yeah. Yo, so you said the Young Thug track on the Swiss Beats was the best song on the album? Yeah. 21 Soldiers. Yeah, you think that's the best one? Or 25 Soldiers. Do you think he had more bars than Nas? I think he had the most bars of all time. On any Swiss beat or any? I will call. I would call Young Thug Church Street after that. <laughs> well, the flaming bars. Yeah. Okay. He had the most flaming bars of all time. Not flaming like fire. Yeah, but like. No, like flaming like fire. No, flaming like. Like a pause. Nah. He didn't say nothing pause worthy in that. He's a pause. Nah, man. You gotta chill on Thugger. Uh, yeah. I like him on that Meek, on that Meek album. Lil Baby and Gunna? So, uh... Your Lil Baby and Gunna. So, the Swiss album... Do you like this, that Lil Baby and Gunna joint, though? No. What about the album? You peeped the whole album? I've only heard what you played me. <sighs> Drip too hard. Do they really drip too hard though? Don't stand too close. Fuck around. And How big are the you drips? You could drown in this wave. How big are the drips? 
She must be dripping hard if you could drown in the wave. That's a pretty big trip. Actually, yeah, uh, maybe I just don't know because I don't know about drippers that big. So maybe I just don't understand what. The, what, what like the you're thing not is dripping. About. I'm not dripping. Your shoes are kind of dripping. I mean, my shoes are hard, hard in the paint. Pause. I'm not debating that. That was a pause. Yeah. Good call. Good call. Drip too hard. Pause. Is drip too hard? Is that pause worthy? Depends on where the drip is going. Not where it's coming from. So does that mean it's only pause worthy if you eat it or if it goes into your ass? If you have anything to do with where the drip is going, <laughs> <laughs> that's a pause. Oh, shit. <laughs> is ass to mouth pause worthy? Wait, if you're doing it to to a girl, you're you're fucking her in, her in the ass. And you At this point, mouth? it doesn't really matter because an ass. It matters. Does it Marshall matters? It uh, Marshall matters too. Marshall matters too. Matters too. Hmm. Family matters. Steve Harvey. Hmm. You see the exhibit interview with no jumper. No. Yeah. Uh, right. Fire? Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> 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 I just thought you brought it up because there was something fire in it. Like You're like, no. Nah. <laughs> I just watched it. It was pretty cool, though. Like, <laughs> Yo, shout out to Adam22, man. We're trying to get that interview. You trying to get Exhibit? Exhibit would be dope. For sure. Yeah. I'd ask him what his favorite kind of bread was. I feel like he likes some exotic bread. Like some shit you can only get in like Egypt or Rome or some shit. Be like, w- what was the thing he was going to for the store in um, the paparazzi video? Milk? Probably bread. Was it Was it bread or was it... It was something simple like that. It was milk or... Oh, does he say it? it the the lady in the, the background says it. Uh-uh. Exhibit, go get me. Uh, yeah, it'd be dope if you got bread. Then this all kind of connects. Yeah. Then, like, the cycle of life's complete. W- w- would you ask him what kind of bread he got in the... Yeah. In the... Yeah. Pop like, what kind video? of bread were you getting? Yeah, White or whole wheat? You think he's getting Wonder? I don't know if they rock Wonder in the States like that. Oh. Um. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. L.A. on a different kind of bread right now. You were just out there? Yeah. What kind of bread did they have? I didn't buy any bread. No? No, I was just dripping too hard. Sweating every day. So, like, uh, what was the... Yo, you performed out there. Cali. You performed out there. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. It was cool. Were you moistening your pants when you were fucking performing? You're like, damn, I'm performing in L.A. No, I just performed. I was pretty drunk. Right on. I actually messed up at one point, but it's like one of those mess-ups where, like, I don't think anyone else would notice I messed up, but I did yeah. the same verse on the same song twice. But the problem is I had a show version of it. So my ad libs are in the background of the verse. Oh. So as I'm doing, I accidentally did the second verse over the first verse. So there's like, yeah. like did the end of certain lines because the lines don't line yeah. up. And then I'm like, fuck. And I, now and then I'm like, if anyone listened, like caught that, which you, I watched the video and it wasn't like, overly like but it was like when they came on it was like something's kind of off you're like what? It, like it, it didn't sound like it was like the wrong ad libs but it sounded like my verse was off from the ad libs yeah, yeah. if you know what i'm saying yeah. but then in the second verse i did the right verse to the right ad libs which was the same verse i just spit so i'm like somebody like had to notice so like, did he just spit the same verse twice or like yeah, yeah. whatever odb did it i can do it right ODB would go up and like just snatch mics from like fucking like big time people. Like heard a story like he, he tried to snatch the mic from Biggie one time. Really? Yeah, I heard yeah. that actually. Yeah. He just go up there and be like, "Yo, Wu Tang, Wu Tang." <laughs> <laughs> ODB seems like someone I wouldn't want to cross paths with in a dark alley in his like dust smoking days. No. 
But like, he, he he seems like somebody. If he was cool with you, then like he, then you'd he, want him to cross paths with your enemy in a dark alley. Yeah, and just yeah. smoking days. <laughs> yeah, or it, it'd be some of the most fucking hilarious moments ever. Just hanging out with him. If you're, oh cool yeah, him. it just seems like everything would just be so wild. Like. Do you yeah. think who do you think the most overrated Wu Tang member is? Overrated? Yeah. Ooh. That's a hard one. I'd say as as far as lyrical, probably probably Riza. As like on the mic. Yeah, I couldn't even disagree with that because RZA's like pen isn't that bad. Yeah, like his pen's actually pretty good, but his delivery on the mic yeah. is like obviously the beats are like there's a, quite a few songs where I think RZA has better verses than Ghost or Ray, but they're not delivered half they're, they're, as well. They're not delivered as well. No, ever. Like I've not like the only time I really heard RZA deliver like super super dope. Like, no disrespect to him. Like, on some of his solo shit, he delivers okay. Yeah, yeah. But, like... Um, what was that? Um, Bobby Digital and Stereo? Yeah. There's quite a few songs on that album that were pretty dope. Is that the one with, like, Guillotine and shit? I don't know. Guillotine? Um, I call it a guillotine, but I'm thinking it's a guillotine. I can't remember that one. Um, fuck, there was a joint I was thinking of, and I can't think of it. Um... So you, 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 you think? So yeah, you, but his Bobby Digital shit, he, he his his flows are usually pretty on point. There's like, yeah, there's not many songs where he he his flows fire on uh, the Grave Digger shit. Like nowhere yeah. to run to, nowhere to hide. Yeah. Um, and his flows fire on this. When he does a really aggressive hype voice, uh, Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Slam like doors. I'll be full of the doors. My style is awesome. Like that shit. Like he delivers that but shit like, cold. Like what I was saying, like like overhyped. And the survey said like, like you're dead. I was thinking about like Fatal the ones that. Fatal five gate chop off your fucking head. Because everybody puts like Method Man, um, Raekwon, Ghostface, uh, Jizza, and Rizza as pretty much the top ones, right? Yeah, like I don't know. I I say in, I say Inspector Deck is the most slept on member in the group. Yes, yes, I, I agree with that for sure. I think lyrically. I think if you look and at even this, delivery, his deli- he just doesn't have like that like swag, but his flow is fire. I think if you look at just just Wu Tang albums, he he might be one of the best. He might be like if you look at Wu Tang projects, he's probably the like, best like, rapper on pretty well most of them. Yeah, like you take away all the solos. Yeah, and you look at just the Wu Tang projects, Inspector Dex probably. Yeah, one, like he's one, like if not two, he to me is the best rapper on Thirty Six Chambers. The best rapper on forever. And uh, then... I agree. Then what do you have after that? The W? Um, The last Wu-Tang one, I think Method Man was... He was fire clearly, on that. Method Man was in his bag for that. The last Wu-Tang one, Method Man was clearly number one on there. Yeah, no, he brought, he brought it on yeah. that. Method Man... Has possibly the smoothest flow in hip hop history. Yeah. What about um? And possibly one of the illest voices. What about um? But yeah, Iggy Azalea. No. But um. <laughs> um. <laughs> to me personally, like for overrated, I would have to honestly give it to um. I think Raekwon. I I kind of knew you were gonna say Raekwon. Like, Raekwon's got so much fire shit. Like, he's got... He does. He does I think he actually... He shit. takes Deck on Cream. Yeah. He's got a better verse than Deck. That's one of the yeah. few tracks, like, someone s- stepped yeah. to Deck. Um, but... You think Raekwon, like, eh? Like, in the purple tape, I love. Um, But he just... A lot of times, this sh- like... I know he talks a lot of slang and shit, but... Sometimes it's just kind of like, nah, like, I don't know. that is the stuff, like, the other people say on the joint around them that, like, you know what I mean? Just overshadows it a lot of times. Like, if we're talking Wu-Tang projects. 
Yeah, okay. Um, Sorry, what were you saying? So what? Um, Bro, Raekwon. Yo, I, I, I find, like, uh, the best solo uh, Wu-Tang album is... Um, purple Tape? Purple Tape. Yeah, Purple Tape is fire. Because wasn't that supposed to originally be the Ghostface album, or it was supposed to be, like... No, it was supposed to be Forever. Yeah, it was supposed to be Forever, yeah. And then they gave it to Raekwon. Yeah. See, no disrespect to Raekwon, but if that would have been Forever, like, that could have been as classic as 36 Chambers. I think Forever is kind of um, overrated. You think Forever's... I, I really like Forever. I know everybody your age does. Anyone I know that's your age who, like, was alive when... Like, well, not alive, like, but, yeah. like... Was really into hip hop when it came out. Man. Loves that shit. Like even I like my that. boy's brother. That's like I, you know, I I knew the shit when it like even like, pretty I'm, well after it came out because his brother was bumping it, and like he was always taking the CD and bringing it. But like, I don't yeah, know, like man. Uh, I remember like even just, like on the way up here on the train today, uh, on on the shuffle, um, uh, reunited double LPs. We're all excited. Okay. Reunited like, triumph. Like there's fire joints on there. Yeah. The MGM impossible dog shit. Um, Impossible is like one of the, like like one of my favorite Wu Tang joints. But there's a lot of like, isn't Winter Wars on there too? Winter Wars was is on, that on um, Ghostface album? That was on Ghostface album. Iron Man, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Winter Wars is fire. Winter Wars is fire. But um, uh, yeah, I, I don't I, know. I, Forever I, to me, it just didn't. Honestly, like uh, for, 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 Forever for me, I like the whole first disc. And then the second disc, I think they could have cut off like the last couple songs. There's a few like, songs on it. Was it like just Black Shampoo. Um, there was like three, I think three or four songs at the end of the second disc that like I, I could have gone without. But other than that, that album is like fire. I could have gone without. And no disrespect, because I like them, but I think Forever would have been a stronger album without Capadonna. Capadon like um, Capadon on like Winter Wars is fire. Capadon on Ice Cream, you know. Capadon yeah. solo shit like Milk This Cow and stuff. But I just think songs like Triumph and stuff would have been stronger without that verse where it was placed. Okay, um, I'm not really sure how I feel about it right now. I have to go, go back in. Like I never really thought about if Capadon was. Uh, I feel like the album. I, I have to go back. I would. I feel like the album would have been better without the Capadonna edition, because you have to mind you. You're already adding Mass to Killa, because he wasn't really around for the first album. And he, he dropped one fire verse on the first album. That was it. So like, for the second album, you're already adding that to this mix that already works so well. Yeah. And then to just kind of like throw Capadonna in there too, it was kind of like I don't know. To me, I just thought that lessened the quality a little bit. And not even because I don't like Capadonna or his energy with Wu Tang. I just think like Thirty Six Chambers it, is it, arguably f- top five best hip hop albums of all time. Like that album is magic. I think like Capadonna really shined on um, um, uh, Iron Man. Yeah, that's when Iron Man. He really shined on Iron Man. Yeah, that's when like he really kind of came in yeah. his bag. He's like. Yeah, he really shined on Iron Man. I think Capadonna has some of the, even the best verses on some of those songs. Capadonna is sick. Like I'm not saying like I don't like Capadonna. Like I feel Capadonna, but he he's almost like uh, if you're gonna like um, the weird um, kind of energy and some of the shit he would say, he'd probably be the closest to a, 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 a older ODB on like some like wild weird shit kind of like yeah kind of yeah out of the box a little bit yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Like, like he was nothing like old dirty, but yeah he can't, like. I don't know. I just I think the album could have done without that. Firstly, secondly, I think RZA should have produced it all. And yeah. thirdly, um, like I didn't like how the shit sounded so clean, which is cool. You know, like Triumph and like. See, see, oh, see, see, that's where like a lot of people like say it, um, the difference between the people that really like um, uh, Thirty Six Chambers and don't like uh, Forever. Everybody says the, the clean mix, which the clean mix is cool. But then they went and made songs purposely sound like they weren't mixed clean. 
Like there's songs like I can't remember the one. Method Man's got like a fire verse and it's a cool beat, but it's like mixed like absolute shit. Like it sounds like it was recorded in like a fucking cafeteria at a high school and like with like a shitty is. microphone. I'm trying to think what the sa- song's called. I think it's that one. I think it's the one with the Method Man. I'd have to go back and listen, but I could yeah. point out immediately. But another fire song on on that uh, forever is a uh, a better tomorrow. Yeah, that song's fire. Yeah. There's a lot of I mean, people. yo, there's... O- o- older Gods? Um, Yeah, Older Gods is dope. That's the piano joint. Yeah. With Ghost. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Older Gods is dope. Yeah. I, yo, like, it's not a bad album. Like, I'm not saying that. Like, I think it's better than the W. Like, don't get me wrong. I think Forever is sick. But all I was saying, like, original point, is that, like, what do you think the better album, Cuban Links or Forever? Cuban Link. Now, if Cuban Links was forever, how fire would that album be? <coughs> you you got what I'm saying now? See, 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 I don't know because like I don't like I know how like that album sounds with all those Raekwon verses on it. Yeah. So it, it, it's hard to say if it would be if it, if it would be better or not. I'm like I don't know. <coughs> I don't know. I think at that period it would have been. It's so worked into my head of hearing it this way that like I don't know how it would be as a Wu Tang project. It's so worked in my head. Like I've listened to that so many times. Like I can't picture it as a Wu Tang project now. Well, if you think about it, like so, Ice Cream would have been on forever then. You know what I mean? Like all those collab joints. But like the vibe of those criminology. Two albums, the vibe of those two albums are way different vibes. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, to me, Forever seemed rushed. You think so? I don't think so. It sounds rushed. Like, I don't know. But, like, yeah, with, 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 with the clean mix, with, the, like, the, like, how it sounds like. No, it, it could be max, mixed and mastered well and still be rushed. Like, I think Sk- Drake Scorpion was rushed. This is, it's a fucking beautiful polished sound. You know what I mean? But it's still rushed. I feel like Drake was, you know, used to really go in his bag and, like, take time with music. And now he's kind of, like, just trying to ride the waves like the young guys do. Like, go in and just knock a song. You know what I mean? Like, a handful of the best songs on the album, he said in that interview with LeBron, weren't even recorded until after Push dissed him. So that means within, like, a couple week radius, you yeah, yeah, banged yeah. out all these songs and they got mixed and mastered down nice. It was some of the best songs, but yo, actually, yo, here's a here's a Wu Tang debate. Um, I, I think, meth, like, I don't know if it's a hot take or not, but I think Method Man's best album would be with Red Man. Maybe um, Blackout. Blackout. I think Blackout is better than Decal. I think it's better than Decal Two Point <laughs> See, I think Method Man's one of the nicest rappers in the group, and I think he's one of the few rappers who, with time, has actually improved. Um, to Cal, like, What the Blood Cloud is one of my favorite songs but, like, of all but, time. But, I love but, that. Even uh, Method Man said that, um, we're talking about Rush, that, uh, that's what came up to my head. Yeah, To Cal was Rush because he, they he, lost he, a lot of it in Rizzo's basement, right? He said that it was right? Rush, yeah. He said a lot of it was lost in Rizzo's basement uh, of a flood. Yeah. But like, which is where Inspected Deck's original album went to, because yeah, yeah. he was supposed to have when the first album's out. Yeah, yeah. that would have been fire. But see, and that could be another reason why the sound changed, right? They started making money, and Brizzo didn't. His basement floods. Like, if he loses his equipment that he used, then you're not going to get that same sound. Right. So I mean, like, you know, she could very well be out of the control too. But I just, you, you can I think tell when when that happened, like, because uh, like uh, it's almost like. Um, the Method Man Cal had a way more had, had that thirty six chambers gritty sound. Yeah, and then like um, so did uh so the Cuban links, so did so did the Jizza, the Liquid Swords. Yeah, uh, ODB's first album. Some of it. A lot of it sounded pretty raw. Did you know the the. This blew my mind. I didn't even know it till the other day when I read an article. Did you know that Brooklyn Zoo was not produced by RZA? Wait, what? Shimmy Shimmy Ya was. Okay, yeah, yeah. But that's like a... 
I thought Rizzo produced that whole thing. Same. No, I guess it was. Um, you find the credit. I can't remember who it was now. I think it was like one of old Dirty's like homies or something. It was like it was somebody else. So, I swear to God, I just found that out the other day, reading an article because it said something about. Um, it was talking about albums and producers. All right, all right. Let's, let's Google this. But yeah, he did. Who produced ODB Brooklyn Zoo? Uh, True Master. Yeah, yeah. Wow. He did a lot of shit though. Like he, he, he True Master was dope. Yeah, yeah. He did a lot of shit. Like, He's really dope. Yeah. But doesn't it have that RZA sound though? Like that sounds like. Well, like True Master <laughs> had that RZA sound in some of his other production too. But it's that, like that beat sounds like it could have been on Thirty Six Chambers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know, man. Thirty Six Chambers is an album I can continuously go back and listen to. And it just, like, the genius of it never seems to, like, never ceases to amaze me. Like, it's just, like, the way it came out at the time it came out, just the way it was put together, like, it's just, like, fuck. And it's, like, Illmatic, like, there's not a... So you're saying with, like, yeah, like, you're saying, like, uh, I'm a little bit older. Like, uh, I almost feel like um, I I, I can listen to Forever and I can listen to 36 Chambers in in different moods. But like in different moods, they're both like whatever mood that is, uh, they're equally yeah a- a- as good to me. I don't know. I just I agree. There are some there are certain times where I'd rather listen to Thirty Six, and there are certain times when I'd rather listen to Forever. And I really like the the W as well. Yeah, even like Iron Flag's not horrible. Uh, uh, the W was really good though. I thought it was all right. I thought I think there were some misses on there. The One Nation, One oh, yeah, Blood the, Under yeah, yeah. the W, the One that Blood one, sample. Yeah. I thought that was kind of a the mess. The Jump Off was fire. The Jump Off is fire. Yeah. And, and uh, then it had like uh, what what most people like that don't listen to Wu-Tang. I like Click Click. Yeah, yeah. Something but, like, in the slum with rump a pum pum A lot of people that don't listen to, to Wu-Tang, if, if you ask them to name one Wu-Tang song, they're going to say Gravel Pit. Yeah. Gravel Pit's cool. Like, Gravel Pit's cool, but it's not like... Yeah, it's not up there with other Wu Tang like classics. No, that was the song I liked when I was young. Uh, I forget the name of it, but the one with Nas on it, on, on Stomping the... Elephants or Ele- Stampede, so- it's something like that. I think I can't remember. Um, I don't know. I didn't think that song was that great. Like it was cool. I like the one with Buster as well. That one I remember being dope. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, I I can't go to sleep. I see, I, I didn't really like, I really like that song. I really like that song. See, I don't know. I just, That's uh, Isaac Hayes shit. Like, yeah, it was just very like. See, that was one that too. When I was young, I listened to it. I'm like, this sounds like shit. Like, I couldn't even I listen love to that song. song. I'm like, jump. what the fuck is going off? And um, I love that song. Right I just never jump. went back and listened to it. Really, yeah, like I, I heard, I have a few times. I know a few hip hop heads are like, I love that song. I just, yeah, I love that song too. Yeah. I even went back. I think like a few years ago when I started the radio show and tried to listen again because that how much acclaim it has around people. And it's like I just don't. There's certain thing, there's certain things that have acclaim with like like hip hop heads that I, I, I don't really get that you don't it. get either. Yeah, that, like certain certain things, but like that one, I, I is uh, a song that I really like. Yeah. See, and that's the thing, though. Every time, like, something has that acclaim and I don't get it, I force myself to get it. Like, I just keep going back over time and listening. I'm like, what the fuck is, like... I'm trying to think if there's... A- but when you don't like something, do you find it's hard to convince yourself to finally like it? Like, like it's one thing if you don't really have an opinion. You know what I mean? I find if, if, if it comes on, like, when you're out with, uh, and you're out, and, like, if you purposely put it on to try and try and like it, it's not gonna happen, but like if no, like, but I mean if, like if, 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 if you're li- if you're out and you're listening to music with people, and that song comes on, you're like, like I'm trying okay. to think. There's been artists and songs before where like I haven't got it, and then like, but it would be like you know I'm trying to think of like like a rapper who like a lot of rappers I like acclaim or something, right? And I'm like, if all these people keep referring to this guy, there must be something I'm missing. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll go back and I'll force myself to find that thing I'm missing. I had to do that with Andre from uh, Outcast. Oh, I got that right away. No, growing up, I thought Outcast was cool and stuff. Like I thought they were dope. Yeah. Like I thought they were a good group. Yeah. But I didn't think they were on like 
you know, level of like inspiring like some of the nicest MCs. I'm like, I don't like. I was like, I've never seen that type of potential in Andre. I'm like, what? I, I didn't really see it as a lyrical thing. I seen that as like a, um, they're on a whole other planet. Yeah, but when you go back and listen, like Andre is a good writer. Yeah, like and so he's different. He, yeah, he's he is too. He's so like the spitter, boy. but like Andre is like a poet, and it's like different. You know what I mean? You don't. It's like I feel like you don't necessarily get it the first time. You know what I mean? Like it is something you almost have to like tune into, tune your ears to, right. to be like, whoa. And that's like, but you know, that was just one one for me that I use in this example when like I find it sometimes it's hard to like when you've already made a decision about something. It's like yeah. I, I was gonna say like that's always gonna just be open minded, and not think anything's whack. As far as like uh yeah, if we're gonna get like what everybody still says like is is great and something that I didn't really feel is like maybe like Eminem later on in his career. Yeah. Like when everybody's like, man, Eminem's like, I'm like, I like the first two albums. Yeah. The third album was good. But yeah. Like, but like I I really like the first two albums. The uh, I'm not talking on the underground shit, but but yeah, yeah, I'm talking like the Slim Shady LP. Yeah, and the Marshall, Marshall Mathers, Mathers, and then the Eminem show. was after that? I like the Eminem show, but it, w- it wasn't up to par with so Jay Z. I didn't get when I was younger. I didn't get Jay Z either until later on. Yeah. Well, like it, it gets like a lot of hip hop heads. I, I don't know if, if people are like this now, but like uh, I remember we talked about this before. Like when you're younger and you're an impressionable. And, like, when, like, Tupac was saying, uh, fuck Biggie, f- fuck Mob Deep. Yeah, but I never, like, like, I never changed my tune on Mob Deep or Biggie or anything because of that. So, like, Jay-Z like, wasn't really. But even, like, uh, like I was a bigger Nas fan Yeah. than I was Jay-Z, and I think that's why I didn't really get into him. See, and that's another thing. When I was younger, I was a bigger Nas fan than Jay-Z. I had both albums. I had Blueprint, and I had um, Stillmatic. And when Stillmatic came out and I got it, I remember just popping it in. And the first thing I hear after the intro, which the intro caught me right away, "Blood of a Slave, Heart yeah, of a yeah. King." I just hard. thought I just thought that line was so dope when I was young. It was like "Blood of a Slave, Heart of a King." I'm like, that's so cool. Yeah. I was like, whoa, like that's a really like. Yeah, yeah. That's a really like. The um, intro is hard. Like I just I I just thought that was such a like powerful line, and then the, they say the brother still mad. I, I hopped about the grit like uh, say, I, no yeah. like that shit was crazy, and then. The next thing comes on it, don't fuck Jay Z, and I just I loved it, yeah. and like I wonder if I viewed Jay Z different at the time. Like I wonder if that's the difference between the like, because look at it now, right? Like the MGK versus the Eminem fans, the people who love Eminem and have like have had that investment of emotional investment to them. They can't hear MGK a certain way. Yeah. They can't hear them. They just don't. Yeah, it's like they choose not to yeah, without yeah. even trying to choose not to. Right. Like subconsciously, they just can't get over that you know what i mean as soon as the kill shot's like that's fire yeah and i'm even a little guilty of it myself but kill shot actually was fire but like uh, i i thought uh mgk's this was pretty good you know what i go through phases like some days i listen to it i'm like yo this is pretty nice I and then other days I, I haven't gone back and listened to either one of them no i i i, I made sure to uh once i'm an m's because i only listen to mgk's like once or twice and i was like okay cool and then once Eminem's dropped, then I had to play them back to back a few times, yeah. and you know, really compare them. Like I think Eminem killed them, but I think I think MG's K's maybe like stung a little more. If that makes sense, I don't know yeah. about stung, but like it was more of a playable. It was more. Uh, it was more of like a joke. It was more like of, the song wasn't a joke, but it was more of like a. Like you can make jokes out of it. Like people that aren't gonna pay like attention your weird to, beard and like p- people that don't pay attention to the bars as much are probably gonna think. Uh, M- MG's K's was cool. Yeah, yeah. And face value, I'm an M fans. Even like people who liked Eminem, maybe you know what I mean. Like know the basic shit about him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you do hear the way he said my dad's going crazy and it's like oh, it's just like to me, I didn't think it was that great, especially like for MGK. As an Eminem fan, growing up, like you know so much about this man, like you should have been able to make a fire diss. Like and MGK can kind of rap too. Like he's not whack. He, 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 I think that was the best thing I heard from him. So. Yeah, it is. I would say so. Because I'm not really a big fan of him, but like, I'm not a huge fan of him either. But that, 
either way but yeah it's kind of like that i say like with the Nas and jay-z too right so it's like the way you feel about artists at a time like i think does affect the way that you hear things so that's why it's good to just have an open mind because i yeah i remember when i to first, everything when i first got into hip-hop like the first person i listened to was ice cube yeah and then i listened to like dre and then i listened to snoop and then i listened to tupac and then it was all like the west coast shit yeah and, like, uh, i listened to a lot of, a lot of that uh, early on uh, a buddy of mine jesse like uh yeah, he, he he burnt me like he's like yo, you need to hear this shit like because like we, we would chill out and like it was all like West Coast shit all the time. Yeah, and he's like and then he burnt me like back when the Limewire days, he burnt me like a Biggie mix, he big, burnt me a Nas mix, he burnt me a Mob Deep mix, and like that's when I got into like everything right, and I was like oh, okay like I can fuck with this shit. Yeah, but yeah, so uh, we should wrap this episode up. This is uh, been a little bit longer than normal, but uh, episode forty six. Yeah. We uh we in the mix. No We con- in the mix. No n- no condom on the dick. Pause. Eddie G wants to fuck Robin Thick. Pause, peace. Press up. That was up the henny out of papoose.